Hi, I have a question for you. What is your reason for watching me online right now? Is it because you didn't feel like going to church today? Or is it because you are just watching me because you know me and just want to hear my message? I want to encourage you today about the presence of the Lord when we meet together in person. Welcome. Thank you for being here. My name is Pastor Terry, and I am the lead pastor at Sherwood New Life Church in Sherwood, Oregon. And so today we are going to continue our series on the presence of God. Last week, we talked about the presence of God in our private devotions. When we are by ourselves and um, talked about the presence of God. But today I want to talk about the presence of God when we meet together and why that is so important. But first let's pray. Lord, thank you for today. Thank you for your word and thank you for your presence as we meet together, Lord, in person. And Lord, I pray that uh, this message will not be offensive to, to those who are not meeting in person in church, but Lord, that it will encourage them um, to, to, to meet here with us or at their local church. And um, I just uh, want to pray a blessing over them as they listen today. In Jesus' name, amen. Before I get into it, can I ask you to hit the like and subscribe button? That will let you know when we have a new message online and uh, it will notify you of that. All right, so today I want to ask you again, what is your reason for watching me online? Um, most churches instantly had an online presence when COVID hit because we could not meet in person. When um, in our state, we uh, we kept listening to uh, to what the state was doing, the closures that they were making, and um, we kept saying, "Oh, it's okay, it's okay, it's okay." And then then it got down to um, our size of church, and we realized that we were going to have to close our doors, and that we would have to instantly learn how to do this online. And you know, online is great. And please hear me. If you cannot make it to church, whether it be, um, if you're, I know, I know there's someone out there who is recovering from surgery and, um, and you can't be in church right now. I understand that that is, uh, we, we get that. Um, some of you may be online because maybe you're on vacation or something like that. But if you are just saying, you know what, I just like to listen online better than getting up, getting dressed, and going to church on Sunday morning, I like this better. I don't have to deal with people that I don't really like to be around. Or I don't have to, I don't have to get dressed. Um, or I don't have to whatever it may be. And it might be that, that you're an introvert <clears throat> and maybe you think you don't like to be around people. But can I tell you, I need to remind you of a verse in Hebrews 10, 25. It says, do not give up meeting together as some are in the habit of doing, but encouraging one another and all the more as you see the day approaching. He's saying, this isn't, this isn't a choice. This isn't a choice here. He's saying, do not give up meeting together as some, as some are in the habit of doing. So even back when this was written almost 2000 years ago, there were those who didn't want to meet together as a church. But you know, it's so very important. I am in the, uh, the midst of a journey of getting a master's degree. And one of the things that I am hearing over and over and over again that is so striking to me 
is that here in the West, we think of, um, well, we really place a focus on us as individuals, you know, a personal salvation, um, a personal this, a personal that, a personal experience. Well, that's your opinion. This is my opinion. And we place great value on that, that individual, you know, um, we make something of ourselves as an individual, but you know, the rest of the world doesn't think that way. They think in, in terms of group or community or tribe or family. Um, and, and, and we don't do that here in the West, but when you look at the Bible, when you look at scripture as a whole, and you look at the plan of salvation, really, and, 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 and God's plan for the church, his plan was not for, not so much for the individual. Yes, we are saved individually. Um, we have to, to take that step as individuals and repent of our sin. However, his plan for the church and for, and, and, and his plan from the beginning to the end is really about community. And, um, and we are the, the end eternity is with community. You know, we, we look forward to being in heaven with our loved ones, with, um, those that we have gone to church with, or those that we have learned about who we have never met in ages past, you know, in, in church history, we will be spending eternity as one, as one community. Um, we'll, we'll still be individuals resurrected in our resurrected bodies. However, we will be in community. And that's so very important because there is something special when we meet together in person. And let me say, um, I know there are those who have said, you know what? I watch, I watch church online, especially, um, back when we were still closed for, uh, um, COVID and we were just beginning to open up and some churches were opening and some weren't. And I had people say to me, well, you know what? I'm just fine. It's great. I worship God at home and I'm good, but you know what? There is just something that happens when God's people meet together in community, in person, in fellowship. And you know, that word fellowship, um, in the original language has a, a component to it, not just a, a, an optional definition, but there is a component to that word fellowship that means together, not together technology wise, but together in person, there is something about that. And, um, in the old Testament, you know, we talked several weeks ago about, about, um, God being in the garden. And when Adam and Eve sinned, that cut off the presence of God with Adam and Eve, they were thrown out of the garden. And from that time forward, God is drawing man to him to be present with him. And in the Old Testament, his presence was in the tabernacle, where the tent um, that, they, that the Israelites set up in the middle of the camp. That's where God, God's presence was. And then when the temple was built and, and the second temple was built, God's presence was in that temple. And then when Pentecost hit um, in the New Testament, in the book of Acts, then the presence of God was within each of us. We are called the temple of the Holy Spirit. But when we get together, there is something about that. There is a special presence of God when we meet together. And we meet together to, um, to it says, to encourage one another to exhort one another. Um, and, and what that means is, you know, maybe I'm having a bad day and I come to church and I'm just whining and complaining. 
And uh, someone who knows me well, a, a, a brother or sister in Christ, might know me well enough to say, you know, Pastor Terry, maybe you should stop complaining. Maybe you're just making it worse by your complaining. Because remember, God's word says don't complain. That's exhortation, and I need that. I need that. We all need that. And so we don't come to church just for ourselves. We come to uh, lift each other up. And, you know, one of the main things that we do is that we come to praise him together. When we lift our voices to God in one, when we sing those songs together, there is just something about that that you cannot get on your own or as an individual. And so I would just encourage you, if at all possible, go to church. Don't just watch online. I I do, I watch other people online, you know, when someone says, oh, so-and-so is a really good speaker. I watch just to see what they do, you know, and, and, and learn, see if I can learn something. But I don't, um, that, I don't, I don't have my main church attendance be online. Now, I am not, again, not, uh, I don't want to offend anybody, um, but if you can, go to church. I would encourage you. If you want to come to our church, you would, l we would love to have you there, but maybe, Maybe you're watching and you live two hours away. Um, go to a, a church. Find a local church that's, that's easy um, distance-wise for you. But go. Go. And God's word says that, that we are a body. And what is a body if, if there's no hand or there's no foot or there's no, you know, no arm or no leg? And... Um, and so you are needed in a church. You are needed, whether you think you are needed or not. God's word says you are. You are needed and wanted and loved. And I just encourage you to attend church. And if you just can't, then we will see you next week right here. Let's pray. Lord, I um, just first off want to say I don't want to be offensive to anybody. But Lord, if if there is someone out there that just has has not wanted to go to church for um, reasons of self or reasons of um, it just is more comfortable comfortable for them to stay home, um, Lord, I just pray that you will speak to their hearts and that they would. Make that step to uh, come to church in person, Lord. Father, I pray that um, that if it's someone who isn't close to our church, that they will find a church in there uh, that's close to them, Lord. And Lord, I just pray that that you will just be with each person who is listening, Father. And um, if someone doesn't know you, Lord, I pray that they will say that simple prayer that is just um, saying, I'm sorry for my sins. Please forgive me and help me to follow you. And Lord, I just pray that you just be with everybody who is listening today. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you for being here. And we will be back next week. And if you would like to give to the ministries of the church, all you have to do is go to SherwoodNewLife.org and you can follow um, the Give Now button. And um, if you have a prayer request, we would love to have that from you and uh, we would be praying for you. All right, you have a great week.